A few years ago, I got this, my first proper PC. And I can't really describe how much better this made my life. Before this, I was doing video editing on a laptop. And when I switched to this with a really powerful processor, a discrete GPU, and you know, the big screen, things were so much better. Everything was just easier. It was so much smoother, so much faster. It had so much storage space. I'm never going back. And that's basically all I use this PC for, is video editing and some gaming. Right now I'm in the middle of Dark Souls 3. But I have to come clean, I have to be honest. This is a pre-built. So I didn't put this together myself, I didn't build this myself, I just bought it online. It's custom, but I didn't build it. Look, I just needed a PC, man, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that life on the laptop sucked and I wanted something better. Anyway, a few months after I got this, I realised it didn't actually have Wi-Fi, it exclusively used Ethernet, and I needed um, a wireless connection to be able to control that camera with this PC, it works via Wi-Fi. So I threw it in the trash and bought another one. Now, the one thing I did know about PCs is that they were upgradable, and I thought it would be relatively simple to install a Wi-Fi card into this computer. So I ordered something that looked reasonable from online, and for the first time ever, cracked open the case to my computer. I'd taken the first step into learning a skill that would serve me well for years to come. PC building. Alright, so 2020 rolls round and everyone is stuck at home. And I need a PC that I can edit 4K 10-bit footage at home with, but I need it to fit in this TV stand, like an Xbox or a DVD player. And it needs to be reasonably priced. The goal is close to £1,000 as I could get. That might sound like an exorbitant sum, but trust me, a reasonable 4K editing experience in 2020 with some storage, that was pricey. Because of my bespoke requirements and because it's fun, I decided now is the time I'm going to build my own machine from scratch. So I start shopping around and oh boy, is that a minefield. I mean, I'm a computery guy. I'm the guy people call to sort out stuff with their PCs, but I don't understand anything. The jargon and acronyms alone are boggling. There are snippets of knowledge I do have, like lots of RAM is good. 4 RAMs isn't enough, 32 RAMs is sufficient for editing, and 17 RAMs isn't possible. I'm drowning in a swamp of the vernacular with desperate need for a lifeline. So I turn to the same place I always look to in moments of need. The very website streaming this content to you right now, YouTube. Now due to the nature of this channel, I've pottered around with many different interests and communities. I spend a lot of time as a noob in a variety of different sports and pursuits. And never in my life have I come across a group of people that is so committed, so hell-bent, so laser-focused, so going out of their way to help you with that annoying question you posted on Reddit than the PC community. The PC community loathe noobs wasting money on ill-suited builds or worse, incompatible parts and are absolutely committed to teaching people how to do this efficiently. All these videos could explain what I needed to know in as little or as much detail as I could stand. And the comments are just as helpful. 20 minutes in and I'd finally understood what was causing me the biggest headache. And that was, what do all these parts actually do? Because before I know what I need, I need to know what it does. The best way I came to understand this was as follows. Imagine the PC is like a character in a video game. Just stick with me here. Each component in the PC is like the character stats, and you can tweak or define your stats depending on your needs. In this analogy, the processor or CPU is like the general intelligence of the character. If you need to do lots of fast number crunching, you need a fast CPU. But the graphics card or GPU is like the character's ability to paint or draw. So if you need to display complex graphics quickly, at high frame rates, with lots of complex textures, then you need a fast GPU. That's why gamers will spend more than half of the entire budget of the PC build just on the GPU. RAM is also important. It's like the character's short-term memory. 
The bigger the problem you ask them to solve, the more memory they need to store all the things you've asked them to remember. Likewise, storage, like hard drives, is the ability to remember things long term, when the computer's off basically. The motherboard is like their skeleton that defines their overall size and shape, the power supply is their heart, fans is their ability to sweat, I guess, and the case is their skin. This analogy is kind of breaking down, but RGB is their ego. So understanding what each part does in the most shallow way, here's the kind of character stats I think I need for a video editing PC. I need a quick thinking guy, someone who can crunch numbers quickly and play back and encode video files, so a fast CPU. But I also need a little artistic flair, the GPU. Nothing like what high-end gaming requires, but enough to get the most out of DaVinci Resolve, the program I use for editing. They need to have a reasonably large capacity for short-term memory, that's the RAM, for big video files, but nothing over the top here. Long-term memory I can cheap out on because I'll just dropbox the files to my big studio PC for storage afterwards. Their heart should be spec'd to serve that fast processor so a mid-range power supply with adequate cooling will do the job. And not forgetting their skeleton and case which should fit into this space in my office. I decided to start when picking components with the brain since from what I've read this is the most important thing for editing. I looked for a CPU that was reported to perform well at what I needed it to do. Before picking anything else, I found a skeleton that could actually fit into the space and a nice case to hold it all together. If it doesn't fit into here, then this is all pointless. From there, I proceeded to select parts that were compatible, up to spec and within budget using PC Part Picker. This website essentially informs you if something won't work or fit, for the most part anyway. After that, I took the plunge and ordered the parts, and soon, lots of shiny components arrived. For a first time builder, this is daunting. Everything is so expensive and delicate, and if you've never seen how it all goes together before, it feels like you can destroy anything as soon as you touch it. What I did to learn how to assemble a PC was essentially just watching PC building videos, and I realised that no matter what you're building, the process is largely similar. Because I'd watched so many people do this before, when it came time to put mine together, it felt like I'd done it all before. So carefully, I started assembly. I would be lying if I said I wasn't anxious about this. So I think this comes up. So this tiny triangle here, to this tiny triangle here. There must be like hundreds of pins I have to get right here. Is that the CPU in? <laughs> hope so. Alright, let's put the RAM in next. Is the RAM the right thing to do? Next? Oh, that was satisfying. Okay. Oh, can you believe there's one terabyte on this tiny thing? Look how thin it is. I just love how everything clicks together so precisely and each component has its specific position and orientation. I wasn't under any illusion here, all I did was choose and assemble components, but I felt like I melted the very sand each silicon chip was made from and designed this machine myself from the ground up. It was mine, it was custom, it was specced for my needs. Does that look right internet? I'm sure you guys won't hesitate to tell me if that's wrong. The CPU. Well, I'll chop that. Right. That being said, the build wasn't entirely devoid of hiccups. Each component was new except for the GPU, which I nabbed from the studio PC, as I replaced that with something much beefier. It's a little bit dusty. Hopefully this is fine. Well, sh Just spotted a problem. So, motherboard's in, graphics card is in using this weird 90 degree thing. Turn the PC up. Look, it sticks out above the case. So if I put this on here, yeah, it doesn't like 
it doesn't sit properly. Damn. Not to worry. You can always spend more money to make it fit. So this Noctua one here, it's a really thin fan. Now, oh God, look how much shallow that is. That's awesome. Cool, that should work nicely. So I had to browse through this first. That's it. I think this is it completed. Should I plug it in and see what happens? Is it gonna explode? Is everything in the right place? I don't know. Very expensive thing to try. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in this tiny little monitor that I use for my camera, uh, just to see if it actually boots up. Right, power cable is in, monitor's on. Uh, let's switch the power on here. I feel like this is going to explode in my face. Right. Oh god. Okay. That's the power supply on. Now I just touch this button. Hopefully I don't get electrocuted. Nothing. Okay. Okay, nothing happened. So it didn't turn on. Nothing exploded but nothing happened, so I consulted the Oracle again. I made a big deal out of getting these connectors right. Um, the power switch was the wrong way around, so... I don't know if that's the only problem, but let's have a go. So switch it on here, please don't electrocute me. Right, hopefully I see something on the screen when I push this button. Oh, that turned, that's turning. Is it doing something? Come on. Right, it didn't explode. This fan's turning. I just want something on this HDMI cable. Come on. <gasps> yes, 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 yes! AMD Ryzen 5 3600 XT 6 core processor. Yes, that's what we've got. I can do stuff with a keyboard and a monitor. <laughs> it's working. Right. Now what? I did have some concern when I finished assembly because, well now what? You've got to get an operating system on there somehow, otherwise it can't do anything. But it's actually extremely easy. Oh my days, look at that. Install now. Yes. I did a thing. I did a thing. There's an immense feeling of relief, pride and satisfaction the first time you press that power button and it boots to your desktop. And for once, clean windows, no b****, no bloatware, no McAfee, just clean windows desktop. I've never been so proud of a, just a blank windows desktop before. I didn't release a video about this when I built this PC because honestly it was so easy and simple that I didn't feel like it warranted a full video. But this skill has become incredibly useful. This year I replaced the battery and an SSD on my laptop and gave it probably another two years of useful life. I would have just binned this and spent two grand on another one if I didn't understand that within the cases of computers isn't just terrifying abyss of confusion that you shouldn't touch, but a serviceable, upgradable and sometimes repairable machine. From there I went on to build a NAS for my Studio 2, essentially my own little storage server. It's got 30 terabytes of storage and can store at least two of my videos now. This is a skill that saves headache, e-waste, money and time. If you've been thinking of putting a machine together, or even just replacing our battery or SSD in your laptop, dive in. Even if a pre-built machine comes out at the same price, I suggest you build your own. It's so fun and rewarding, but the skill that comes with it makes all of your tech more repairable, upgradable and adaptable. Just do it. This episode was supported primarily through a tip jar model on Patreon. 
If you'd like your name in the credits like these wonderful people, you can contribute a few dollars to the channel via the links below. Thanks, as always, to the people who've already supported the channel. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, folks. I'll catch you next time. Peace.